gives up. Rebellious people become shameless. Rebellious people become shameless. We look at uh, verse 32. It says, um, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, these people who know the righteous judgment of God, these people who sat in this church and heard me preach this message, they still go out here and practice such things. After I've told them that God is going to abandon you, that God is going to wash his hands with you, that God is going to say, I'm done with you, they've heard the warning. The warning comes before what? The destruction. And they go out and they, and they practice those things. And they know that they are deserving of death. Yet, not only do they practice these things, what does it say? The end of verse 32. But also what? Approve of those who practice them. My God. Not only am I going to lay down with a man, I'm not going to be ashamed of it. I'm going to make my support known for those who do the same thing I do, even though I know that what I do is shameful and nasty and wretched and vile. I'm going to show my support. My Lord. I'm going to show my support. I support you. And, and you know, and, and here, here, here's where the church gets messed up. We've softened our stance. Now, mind you, mind you, this is what I'm saying. I didn't tell nobody to go pick no fight. Brother, I don't do that. Did I tell anybody to go fight nobody? I didn't tell nobody to go fight nobody. I didn't tell you to go kick nobody door down and tell them, you go on to hell. <laughs> However, however, when the world looks at us, there should be a clear-cut difference between us and them. There is us and there is them. When we look like the world and we act like the world and we talk like the world, what the old folks used to say, if it look like a duck and it quack like a duck, what? It's a duck. It's a duck. So then... While I can, as they say, love on you, while I can be a friend to you, Come on, man. I, I got to be careful with my association with you. You know why? Because the Bible says what? What is the Bible say? I preach it all the time. Bad company does what? Corrupt, good character. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh, Dr. Kale. Dr. Kale, oh, Dr. Kale. Come on, Dr. Kale. Come on, Dr. Pratt. Uh oh. Bad company corrupts good character. Yes. Y'all hear me say that all the time, or, or I usually say bad company corrupts good morals. Same thing. Bad company corrupts good character. If I'm hanging around the wrong people, if people see me, and I'm on Facebook and I'm hanging with this person and they're that way. Yes. <laughs> yes. That way, that, that way works. But if, if, if you see them that way and everybody knows and I'm, and I'm not just talking about Facebook, I'm just saying anywhere, if I'm hanging out with these people, if I'm always seeing with these people, because, I mean, you talk to people and how else you going to witness to people if you don't talk to them? However, I got to understand what the Bible says, don't let my good be what? Evil spoken of. I got to put myself in a, I, I, I can't put myself in positions where it even looks bad. My Lord. Because my life is a witness for Christ. Amen. My point is, when God gives up on people, there is no shame now. Now, you know what? And, and here, 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 like I, I was saying about the church, the church is saying, you know what? You come on in here. Come, yes, please. Please do. Please come on in here. But when you get here, I'm going to do my best to preach the gospel to you. The gospel that changes. The gospel that saves. The gospel that renews your mind. I'm going to try to wash you with the word. I'm not going to get you in here and, and, and don't tell you about your sin. Nor am I going to get you in here and take this Bible and slap you in the face with it. There's a balance. I'm not going to harp on you. I can't talk to, 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 to you 
more than I can talk to uh, uh, anyone else. At the same time, and I heard this from another preacher, and I thought it was amazing. I said, God, where did this joke come from? Everybody needs to hear him. And the minister said, why is it that the church is so hard on homosexuality than, than, than other things? The person that's cheating on his wife hides his sin because he knows he's what? Wrong. The person that's cheating on her husband, she hides her sin. She sneaks around what they call sneaky link. Why? Oh, I, I know you, son. What, what they call sneaky link. Why? Because they know it's what? Wrong. But the homosexuality, the homosexual group, they don't sneak anything. I'm sinning and I have no shame about it. I want to, I want to go down and protest and bring my banners and rainbow everything. The rainbow belongs to God. The rainbow means right. it's promised not to destroy the earth by water anymore. That's right. That's what it means. Your rainbow is going to carry you to hell because yeah. God has abandoned you. The truth of the light, you got to tell it. God has abandoned them. But but this is but when God give when God has abandoned them, they say, you know what? Well, what, ain't no shame in my game. Let it all hang out. Why? Because I'm gay and I'm proud. I'm happy and I'm proud. Uh -huh. Go ahead. I'm proud to say I hate God. If your God won't allow me to be who I am, oh. then I hate him. And then guess oh. what else they say? Guess what I say? They say, I was born this way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Liar. Now, hold on. Now. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You were born that way, sir. Man, you were born that way. Okay. Now, we can all think about somebody from very young ages, very young ages, very young ages, who always showed some little, hmm. <laughs> And one, one thing you can always bank on for the most part, that they didn't have a father in their lives to teach them how to be a man. Amen. Amen. That's, that's one of the main things you can find a lot of times, Amen. that they did not have a father to teach them how to be a man. Now, many times they have been molested, they have been touched or whatever yes. by people who they were close to. Yes, my Lord. And that's vile. However, in all cases, they haven't been molested. In all cases, they haven't been touched. Yes. And in all cases, they have not, not had a father. Yes. So then, okay, Lord, what about this smaller number of people who have not been touched, who had their father, who da 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 and they still turn out this way? What about them, God? Were they born this way? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about it? The Bible says we were what? Born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So then, am I saying that God created anyone homosexual? No. No, that's not what I'm saying. However, what I am saying is people are, people can be born with the inclination that sin, that spirit may, 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 uh, 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 uh attach themselves to. They go. That, 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 that sin, that, that, that proclivity to go this way may be in on that child from 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 from, from, from birth. You, you see what I'm saying? Not that God made them that way, but by them being born and tainted into sin, and depending on who, what family, or whatever the case may be, whatever factors around it, that, that uh, 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 spirit that has been dealing in this family may reach that child at that very young age. My God. That is why the Bible says what? Train up a child in the way that they should go, because if they, if you don't train them up, they're going to go the way their inclinations take them, and the way our inclinations will always take us is what sin. Yes, you may not turn out to be homosexual, but you may turn to be a uh, 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 fast in the tail, or, or you may turn to be this, that, or the other. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Whatever the sin is. There, there, there's a, a, a spirit of um, the, the, the womanizing spirit, that, that kind of womanizing spirit that you ain't born, God didn't create you a womanizer. However, that inclination, that spirit Let is inclined to, 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 to bother you from, from, from a child. 
that devil. You, you see what I'm saying? So, no, I don't, I do not, I do not believe that God creates anyone no, no. off. I believe that there are so many factors, and I believe one of those factors are spiritual that will start in a child at a very, very, very young age. Yes, yes. My God. Pray. But there is no shame. No. But then there's also, also, there are so many people who claim that they were born this way. And God has changed them and renewed their mind and they're living in a healthy, happy, godly, biblical marriage. There are people who were so depraved in their mind that they went as far as to get a sex change. And even in that sex change, the Holy Spirit reached out to them where they were. And even living in a woman's body now, this man says, I messed up. But I know he still loves me. How that works out? Jesus. Please don't ask me that question. That's one question I can't answer. I don't know. But God is merciful. Yes, he is. That a person who has already changed and said, I thought that this change was going to make me happy and I'm still messed up and I'm still messed up in my head and even now I'm even worse. But then even in this shape, God still found me, a man living in a woman's body. God still found me. And then, and then to bring this no shame part to the end uh, Jenner, Bruce. Yes. Bruce Jenner. Yes. Bruce. Yes. I said Bruce. I Bruce. Now, <laughs> Bruce. Yes, sir. Says they they had they had an interview with him, mm -hmm. and he said they had an interview with him, and he said, "I pray that when I meet God and judge him, he'll say." Well done, you did your best. Oh, God. And he does not know. He does not know what he's in for. He does not know what he's in for. Because when you see Jesus facing judgment, you go, it's going to scare the mascara off him. When you, stay, when you stay in front of Jesus in judgment, you're going to stand in front of Jesus as Bruce Jenner, the man. And the man will be judged. And judgment is not going to go well for you. Unless, while it is yet day, while the Spirit of God is still striving with man, you say, I forfeit my lifestyle. What did Jesus say? He said, before you, before you come follow me, what did he tell you to do? Deny yourself. Deny yourself. What does that mean? That means there that are things that I love. There are things that I want to do. There are ambitions that I have that are not like you, and I give them up for what Repent. you want. That's right. Repent. Then he says, count the cost. Amen. What does that mean? That means following you already cost me the things that I want. Now, following you may also cost me my life, Amen. my livelihood, my family, my, my friends. And I counted it. Oh. And if they all go, I still want to be with you. And then he said, after you have denied yourself, your worldly vow passion, after you have counted the cost and saw that it's going to lose you, family, friend, oh. children, then you said, now, take up your cross. Pray and come on. And follow. Let us take up our cross. No matter what it costs us. Amen. No matter what it costs. If my mama don't go, if my brother don't go, if my sister don't go, I got to go by myself. Amen. Hallelujah. I will go. Amen. Jesus said in the last days it'll be father against son. Y'all know the verse. I, I, I'm, I'm probably probably yeah. messing it up. But father versus son, mother versus daughter, uh, in-law versus in-law. 
so on and so forth. Let it not be made once among us. Amen. And, 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 and so, 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 I want to bring some one more thing home. In all of this stuff, in all of these vile passions that are mentioned, in this reprobate mind that is mentioned in verse 28, 29 saying, of being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, <coughs> backbiters, haters, and, and, and that whisperers is gossipers. Backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, invent inventors of evil things. And what does that last one say, y'all? What does that last one say? Disobedient to who? Parents. That is one of the things, if y'all missed it, among all that bad stuff, all that crazy, weird stuff, all those crazy vile passions, one of the bad ones is what? Disobedience to parents. parents. That's part of it. You might say, hey, I'm disobedient to my parents now. You better hope God didn't give up on you. You better hope God didn't give up on you. You better get it right now. Because the Bible says that there's one commandment with a promise. One commandment comes with a promise. Or, or the first commandment that is, I think it is. The first commandment that comes with a promise. And that is what? Honor thy father. And thy mother. Yes. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor them both. Yes. Respect them. Be obedient to them. Follow their rules. Respect them as your elders. Yes. Do what they tell you to do. Listen to them. Glean wisdom from them. Hear them when they speak, and not only hear them and let it go in one ear out the other, but let it go down inside because they won't tell you anything wrong, Amen. hopefully. That's yeah. why some people, but hopefully, they're trying to train you up in the way that they should. Amen. But he says, when you honor thy father and thy mother, your days will be long on the earth. So then you gotta imagine, you gotta imagine that the opposite is true. That if you don't honor your father and your mother, if you disrespect your father and your mother, if you are disobedient to your father and your mother, that you are what? Shorten your days. Don't go so long till God gives up. I'm done. God bless you.